What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey and welcome to another Miniature Rescue. This week, we're gonna take a look at one of my absolute favorite models in Warhammer, the Skaven Doom Wheel. This video is sponsored by Broken Anvil Miniatures, but more on that in a little bit. Now I got back into Warhammer around the Age of Sigmar era, when that first box came out. And honestly, I didn't know anything about Warhammer besides my previous very limited experience with 40k. And that was a very long time ago when I was pretty young. And even then, it only lasted a couple of years before I moved on to other things. So jumping into Warhammer after the fall of Warhammer Fantasy, there were a ton of things to catch up on. I jumped right into the deep end and started collecting whatever interesting minis I could get my hands on. Never mattered what army it was for, only that it was cheap and in a condition that I could either paint over or strip the model and repaint it myself. By far, one of my favorite factions is the Skaven, a race of rats that had become very proficient at building unique war machines and marching to battle as a massive horde. Partially, I like them because of the aesthetic. The war machines are really cool looking and there's a ton to like about how each one works in this fantasy setting. The other reason is that they read really well on paper. Just listen to this line in the last battle tome. <coughs> the enemy's first warning is the scrambling of a million claws and the skin crawling sussers of thousands of furry bodies squirming over and around one another. The sound carries up from the dark and noisome depths, mingling with a verminous reek that grows thicker and more cloying by the moment. It just sounds so cool, and I love the imagery that the books can bring into this army. Another reason is that just over 22 years ago, when I was a boy of only 13 years old, I read a Gotrick and Felix novel called Skaven Slayer. I remember picking it up from the library and really getting into the book. Now to this day, I can't really remember if it was good, but what I do remember were the Skaven. So naturally, I gravitated toward the Ratmen of the Warhammer world, and even now they're one of my favorite models to paint and play on the tabletop. That brings us to the model we're looking at this week. Not only is it a beast of a model, but it's one of the most random, stupid things you can play in a game, and therefore, the best model in this army. The Doom Wheel is really stupid. And remember, the more stupid it is, the better it is. This is a chaos army, and there's no sense in making sense if you're gonna run with sentient chaotic rats. It's basically the Monty Python style of thinking. It can be somewhat serious. There are things going on, war. Then out of left field, you're fighting a killer rabbit. You see what I mean? Anyways, the Doom Wheel is a fantastic model that has loads of great character and storytelling built right into it. It doesn't look like it should work, but of course, it does. This particular Doom Wheel was sent to me quite a while ago by a subscriber by the name of Chris. As far as I've been told, Chris is a bit limited in terms of the kinds of hobby supplies that he has access to, and a few of the models he has sent me over the last few years were assembled using hot glue. Mostly being used for D&D, these were roughly thrown together to get on the table and into a game, which makes sense. Do what you gotta do to get that model on the table. Unfortunately though, as great as hot glue is for the hobby, generally, it tends to make building model kits a bit of a hard process because the pieces won't really fit together as intended, and this model will require a bit of work. So let's take a closer look at the model and see what we can do. The Doom Wheel is currently technically put together, but the hot glue isn't quite keeping the whole thing together. There are quite a few strands of fine hot glue hair that got tangled up into a lot of the spikes on the model. Comparing this one to one that I painted a very long time ago, we can start to see the hot glue version is definitely missing a few key pieces, and we will need to figure out a way to finish off this model before the end. The wheels have also been put together with the tracks on the outside instead of the wood paneling running around the top, which created an issue where the actual wood panels had to be cut down in order to fit that smaller curve. So when we rebuild these pieces, there will actually be holes in the wheels that we'll need to consider. I'm gonna try my best not to break anything as I take this apart. The hot glue has a really good hold on a lot of this model, so carefully with an X-Acto, I will get this guy into pieces and ready to be cleaned. 
I am going to remove as much of the hot glue with a hobby knife as I can without cutting into the plastic. And once everything is taken apart, I will toss the model into my ultrasonic cleaner to strip the paint and soften that glue a little more so I can cut the rest away. After the model comes out of the cleaner, I can scrub it down using a toothbrush. This takes quite a lot of the paint off and starts to expose the original plastic. It also cleans off quite a bit of the hot glue, but there's still a ton of that that's gonna need to just be cut off. I also took the opportunity to scrape all the mold lines and extra bits of flashing off the model just to try and make each piece look its best before we start to get everything back together. Before we get to reassembly, let's talk about today's excellent sponsor. Forged is a massive campaign full of high quality, low cost tabletop miniatures and original 5e compatible content for gamers and hobbyists everywhere. Forged includes beautifully sculpted 28mm heroic scale pre-assembled plastic miniatures as well as 5e compatible content and there are some truly fantastic goodies waiting to be unlocked. You can choose the Heroes box, which features an exciting array of brave and daring characters. Or you can choose the Encounters box, with its squads of formidable enemies and impressive foes. Backers also have the option to get both these heroes and enemy squads with the Adventure box. And for all you do-it-yourselfer folks out there, Forged also offers an Adventures STL bundle so you can 3D print these models at home. But if you want the very best value this campaign has to offer, then pledging for the Forge Masters bundle will get you all the minis in the Adventure Box, plus the 5e Adventure Module, plus the Creature Compendium, plus the 7-piece Dragon Bundle, plus the 45-piece Terrain Bundle. That's a whole lot of pluses. And you'll be able to get even more as this campaign grows and unlocks more and more minis. By supporting this campaign, you'll get an incredible deal on a ton of Broken Anvil's creations before they hit retail. And you'll be helping the BAM team achieve their dream of making these minis a reality. The campaign is live right now on Kickstarter. You can see it all for yourself by checking out the links in the description below. Thank you again, Broken Anvil, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to that doom wheel. Now that this model is pretty much ready to be put back together, it's time to start thinking of ways to replace the missing parts and broken parts on the model. I wanna be able to use this guy in a game, so it needs to be at least, you know, 90-ish percent put together and painted before I can do that. I have a handful of leftover scaven boxes, but for the most part, I've built and painted everything I've ever gotten for this faction. So there is slim pickings when it comes to real world bits. I am depressed. So naturally, I leapt onto the internet and started looking for 3D printable parts. And what do you know? There are actually some very, very good files out there with parts and pieces that work really well with a Doom Wheel. In particular, the flag that goes on top, the connector that goes over the wheels to keep them held together, and the sides that attach the wheel and wrap around the front with metal claws. Now that I have all these pieces I need, it's time to rebuild this model. The first part of the model to tackle will be the wheels. Each piece needs to fit together so that the cogs can fit the front grille and be attached to the main body of the Doom Wheel. Once those are put together, I can glue them to the frame. Then, using the 3D printed connector over the top of the wheel, I can lock in the frame to the wheels without worrying about the whole thing falling apart. Everything else fit pretty well once, you know, we got everything locked into that frame. The sides fit into the slots and the cogs, and the flag already has a built-in holder on top of the frame, so a little glue in it went together pretty nicely. I mentioned earlier that there would be holes in the wheels, and now that they are built as the original design intended, you can see where the wood planks were cut in order to fit the inner perimeter of the wheel design instead of going on top. In order to fix this, I did move the holes strategically into places where they'd pretty much be covered up, except for one right on top. I decided to take an iron jaw shield and fill that hole, something metal that got picked up along the way and stuck on to give that wheel a little more traction. It ended up working out pretty well and looks kind of cool as part of the wheel. It might not have been a bad idea to have some metal bits on these wheels from the get-go, 
It would make these things look more like tank treads while still maintaining that fancy vibe. Maybe when Games Workshop gets around to redesigning and adding to the Skaven faction, we can expect a cool new version of this Doom Wheel. Or, you know, we can hope. It might happen. Yeah, and monkeys might fly out of my butt. The model is built and now primed with black. Let's get some color on it and get the model ready for the tabletop. I start with a coat of white ink from above. I wanna set up a few things for the airbrush because getting a paintbrush into some of these areas is going to be a bit of a chore. Normally for this model, you would wanna leave quite a lot of it in just a sub-assembly. That way you can paint everything separately, then put it together. The reason for that is pretty simple. There's a ton of stuff in the way and it makes getting a brush on the inner parts of the model next to impossible, but I didn't do that. And since I'm using an airbrush, I'm just gonna spray those larger hard to reach areas now when there's no other paint on the model so we can get them painted up and not have to worry too much about being careful with a paintbrush in order to get those things base coated. I'm gonna start off with green for the flag and for the cloaks of the Skaven driver and brake man. I'll follow that up with a brighter green from above to give that some variation. Since I started painting Skaven with the Nurgle side of things, the Pestilence, I've always stuck with green for my main colors, regardless of which part of the army a model is technically from. There are several different smaller factions within the larger faction of the Skaven. I've always found it to be a good color for rats. Even the non-pestilent rats in this army still seem kind of gross, so nasty green makes sense for rat people. Next up, we'll be filling in the wood panels on the wheels and back of the model. I start with a dark brown with the intention of adding an orangey brown to broadly paint over that texture. But before I get to any detail work, I grab out my airbrush again and add a little more color variety with some burnt umber ink. This allows me to get to the underside of the wheels where a brush is hard to maneuver and changes the look of the wood panels on the outer side. A little color variation in the wood definitely enhances the overall look and helps sell the scrappiness of these rat men. For all the metallic parts, I decided to go with a couple different types of copper. I start with a pretty dark paint to go over most of the model and follow that up with a bright copper, just kind of randomly painted on a lot of the parts. Once again, just adding a bit of variety to the mix. In order to break up that copper, I come in with some dark silver. This just breaks up that orange and makes the metallic areas stand out much better. It's always nice to mix metallics up a little bit because you always run the risk of making everything look the same. My old Doom Wheel has this problem and I've always wanted to go back and change that. So I might as well do that on this one before I call it done and probably never touch it again. Once the base coats are all done, I'm gonna hit the whole model with Tamiya panel liner. This will get into all the metal bits really nicely and start to weather them down. And the wood grain on the panels really starts to stand out. After the oil dries, I hit the entire thing with a coat of matte varnish to really lock that layer in and dull everything down so it looks aged and weathered. Normally, this would be a not so great step if there are a lot of metallics like this model has, but I want that copper to be pushed back and dirty. So a little less shine adds to the overall look that I want to achieve. All right, so here we are in the final stretch and it's time to start bringing out the details on this mini. I'm gonna start by bringing in the skin tone for the rats. A little bit of pink for the nose and brown for any of the fur that happens to be popping out. Then I'll follow that up with a wash of Agrax Earthshade to dirty them down. They are out in the open on this giant rat wheel, so they'd probably be a little dirty. All of the metallic rivets get a little dot of bright silver to make sure that they stand out, and all along the edges of the copper. I use the same silver to give a little highlight of battle damage. To go along with that battle damage, I'm gonna bring in some teal and white verdigris. The teal really brings out a ton of color in the overall model, and I always love the way this looks over the orange of copper. And adding in a little spot color of a powdery white to mix with that gives the whole thing an aged appearance. It's a great combo, and it works almost every time. For the cloaks on these passengers, I'm gonna use Scale 75's Toxic Waste. Now the reason I'm calling this color out in particular is because in almost every situation that I use it, which is genuinely highlight green, it blends so well that it makes the process seem easier than with other paints. As far as a bright green highlight goes, this is one of my absolute favorites and worth looking into if you haven't used it before. The final piece of the model is to get that green warpstone looking properly glowy. I get out my airbrush once again and coat the tubes and warpstones, as well as lay down a nice green on the front of the spikes for good measure. 
I'll take that a step further by using a little warp stone green contrast paint on those same parts to really saturate that green to get a little shading in the stones and near the bottom of each pipe. And finally, with the same bright green as before, go over the high points on the pipes to give them a little bit more of a gradient in color. That should pretty much wrap up the paint on this model, and I think it's just about ready for some serious chaos on the battlefield. Okay, listen, there are rare moments when we play war games where the goal isn't exactly to beat your opponent. This model is one of those game pieces that introduce an element of fun into a game in order to make memories. Here's an example. Let's say I wanna take a turn with this doom wheel. I line up my movement intent on running over an enemy unit and wheeling around to get in a strategic position to do something else later on, score an objective or some such. But wait, the movement for this model isn't written in inches. No, you have to roll four six-sided dice to determine how far it can move, which is already pretty cool. But say you roll pretty low and you can't complete the movement you want. Well, there's an option to re-roll any of those dice. So of course you should because the game said you could. If you re-roll those dice and any of them turn out to be a one, Doom Wheel still gets to move, but your opponent gets to decide where. It's a fantastic chaotic element that really sells this army and this model for me. And it creates a moment in an otherwise normal game of Warhammer that you're very likely to remember and talk about with your friends. That push your luck element feels good when it works and when it doesn't. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no better way to have fun in Warhammer than when that happens. So do yourself a favor. Get yourself an army of doom wheels and have a ton of fun with your friends. I promise you probably won't regret it. Thank you again for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. And of course, here is the finished doom wheel. Thanks again.